where are some of the fun places we might visit first in a semi-permanent way inside the solar system that you think are worth visiting? Yeah, at the end of 500 years, I'm hoping we make the big launch towards another solar system, uh, really driven by the fact that we now actually have exoplanets that we know we might be able to get to and survive on, whereas 20 years ago, we really had almost none, certainly none that we knew were habitable. And exoplanets even just, just discovered didn't start to happen until 89 and really the early 90s for the real validated ones. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping over the next 500 years, we go from thousands of possible habitable planets to hundreds of thousands or millions, at, uh, you know, especially with some of the recent telescopes launch, we'll find them. But but before we get there, I have a, a whole section I really describe about the magic of Titan because it has all this methane, which is a great hydrocarbon you can use to make fuel. You can use it, it's cold as all bejesus on titan but if you can ice it's uh yeah it's it's, it's what so what's a titan made up of what is titan oh everybody loves titan yeah t t it is it's a favorite uh, moon. it's this kind of eerie uh green hued moon um that's around saturn that is uh to our knowledge you know this large it has like you know it's so cold it has these methane lakes where the methane normally is a gas, but there would actually be so cold, it's like a lake of methane. You could go swimming in it, potentially. There might be some degree of uh, rocks or m maybe mountains there, but they might also be made of like frozen methane. So we, no one's ever, uh, no, no person's obviously been there, but it is, you know, have enough satellite imagery and some data that you could actually potentially survive on Titan. So I think that'd be one place where I'm hoping that we would at least have a, uh, a bit of an outpost. It might not be a luxurious retreat because it's really cold. Is there a life on Titan, you think, on, underneath the surface somewhere? Maybe. Well, actually, with all that carbon and all those hydrocarbons, it, it is very possible that some microbial life could be there and, and hang out waiting for us to, to, to dip our toes into the methane and, and find it. But we don't know yet. But I think that's one place I'd like to see an outpost. I would like to see other outposts near Jupiter, but Jupiter has extremely high radiation, actually. So even places like Io, which are volcanically active and quite amazing, we probably couldn't survive that long that close to Jupiter, though it has, because it bring, it's such a giant planet. Uh, it emits back out a lot of radiation that it's collecting from out, out of the parts of the universe, and it juts back out. So if you get too close to Jupiter, you'd actually almost certainly not be able to survive, depending on which part of it. But that's one risk about Jupiter. Um, but it'd be cool to see the giant red spot uh, up close, maybe have some spots there. Uh, Mars is top one. Then you get to pick Titan or Io, so ice... Fire and Ice, Fire and the, the, the Robert Frost poem comes to mind. Yeah. And then Europa, is that? Europa would be cool too. And Enceladus, which is a big uh, ocean. It might be there, like an alien ocean that's under the, uh, it might be even water ice that's there, and water, even liquid water potentially there mm -hmm. under the surface. So that'd be a great candidate. The asteroids of Ceres would be good, or Eros, or big enough you get a little bit of gravity. That it'd be interesting. You could you know, have a, maybe a habitable place there. And they just might be big enough that you could get there, survive, and even have a tiny bit of gravity, but not much. Why do you like asteroids? No. Are you just, this? we're just listing vacation oh, oh, spots. Place, yeah, vacation spots, basically. Yes, I'd say. That. Well, so they probably have a lot of rare earth minerals that you could use for manufacturing, which is why part of the space economy that's being built up now is people really wanting to go and hollow out the asteroids and bring back all the, um, you know, all the resources from it. So... This uh, legally is very possible because even though um, the, the Space Space Act prevents people from militarizing space or owning all of it, if you get the resources out of an asteroid but you don't actually say you own it, that's still that's perfectly legal. 